I think that the story uh, behind Heavy Rain could be uh, could exist on other medium, and there is a project of movie right now in Hollywood with uh, famous writer David Milch, and um, he wrote uh, Deadwood before, and he's a very famous and talented writer. So the, maybe there will be a film based on Heavy Rain, but I think that the experience that the game provides is unique. You cannot have the same experience. You can tell the same story, but you won't have the same experience. I think a major part of Heavy Rain is the fact that it's not just a story that you watch, but it's something where you are actually the actor and the director uh, and the writer of this thing. This is what makes the experience unique, and no other medium that interactivity can offer this type of experience. And that's what I love about games, it's that they're so unique. I, I think I'm a little bit uh, anachronistic, definitely, game designer. Uh, I think I'm, I'm trying to create what the market doesn't want, or what they don't say they want. But I, I, I'm, I, I read uh, Cervantes, uh, and he wrote in the 15th century, 16th century, he wrote something about theater. He said, never write what the audience expects you to write. And that was in the 16th century, and I, and I love this idea. I mean, don't make games that people expect from you. Otherwise, you lose your time, you lose their time. You need to give them something they want without knowing they want it. Um, I think it's Henry Ford, he said, uh, if you ask people in the 19th century what they would want to, to travel, they would say a faster horse, but no one would have said, I want a car. And, and that's exactly where, 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 what I'm thinking of. It's let's try to figure out what we want rather than giving you what you know you want. My favorite character uh, is probably Ethan in Heavy Rain. Uh, because he's a father and, and I was a young father at the time I wrote it and I really felt close to this to this character in particular and I thought a lot about his situation about what I would do if it was happening to me if I would be ready to do anything to save my son and and there was no clear answer to that because you can when nothing happens you can all, always pretend that yeah I would do incredible things and when things happen would I have the courage to do what Ethan does. I hope so, but but I can't be sure. So yeah, that's probably the character I feel the closest to. <laughs> well, dealing with game over situations was something very important to us because for me, if you try to tell a story and you create artificial loops in the story where, oh, wait a minute, you didn't have the right outcome, just go back and replay the same bit of story again and again until you succeed. I think that it would have ruined entirely the, the experience. So we wanted to deal with death and game over situation like in real life. I mean, you can make failures in real life. I can give you a very terrible interview and may maybe that's what I'm doing, but <laughs> I can give you a bad interview and still my life will continue after that. And I will have to deal with the consequences of that. And same thing in, a, in, in the story of Heavy Rain. You can fail. If he doesn't kill you, you can continue and carry on. Unless it kills you, and if it kills you, that's the end of your story. But in Heavy Rain, as there are four characters, you can carry on with the others. So yeah, I think that dealing differently with game over situations is a very important thing to me, in games in general. And that's uh, because it opens new possibilities and it, it makes you, it forces you to think differently about storytelling and about the experience itself. It's a difficult question, and I'm not sure what the answer should be. On the one hand, 
the controller, the DualShock controller or the Xbox controller, they are a barrier for many people. Many people would like to interact. Maybe many women especially were interested in the story and the characters of Heavy Rain, but they never took the controller because there are so many buttons everywhere that they didn't want to try. So maybe by having more accessible controllers, we may have these people starting to play instead of just watching the games. On the other side, moving is another way of controlling. It's in many ways another barrier. Uh, when I play, I don't always want to jump on my coach and, and run and, and make big moves. Sometimes I just want to be you know, cool on the sofa and just play. So it's important to get rid of this barrier. At the same time, is motion control the, the ultimate answer? Uh, it still has to be proved, I think. It's not that obvious right now. And most of the time, I, I consider the controller just like a tool. It's a part of the immersion and the, and the experience, but at the same time, what it really matters is what happens in your mind, much more than what happens on your thumbs. And there is a balance to be found here. So I, I'm afraid I don't have a clear answer for you. It's, yeah, it could be a part of the equation. Is it the ultimate answer? I'm not sure. I think that uh, more than ever, it's because the world is in crisis, because there are so many terrible things out there that we need. We need entertainment and we need more movies and books and, and, and the creators exploring different worlds and giving you maybe some hope uh, in the future. And uh, yeah, I think that's absolutely necessary. And I think that games can be a part of it. They, they don't have to be about violence and about shooting and about all these things all the time. It's great that there are games like that, but do we need only games about shooting and, and about violence? I don't think so. I mean, you can use them to tell very interesting and meaningful things. You can use them to share hope or to share your ideas or your views about, about things and, and to trigger more interesting emotions, more complex emotions. And I hope more and more people will, will start to do this because, I, again, I think we'll need, we'll need it more and more. Hi to sabaludist.com uh, uh, visitors. Hi. Thanks to David Cage.